Hey, welcome back to Pocket Pulp. Eric Brian Moore here, your host, and this week I'm excited to share God's Fall by Joshua C. Cook. God's Fall is the prelude to the Forge Master Cycle. You can find the first two books of the Forge Master Cycle on Amazon or on Audible, and Josh is hard at work on the third story, which will be arriving sometime this year, I believe. I'll put the links to those books in the notes. You can also find Josh at his website, joshccook.com, or you can follow him on Twitter at grae500, the numbers 500. Josh has always been a voracious reader, having sometimes read up to six to ten books in a week. That's amazing to me. But he took the plunge in 2014 and self-published his first story and has been doing it ever since. I got to meet Josh when he hired me to narrate Blood of a Fallen God, book one of the Forge Master Cycle, and I'm excited to present the prelude to that series here today. All right, if you like what we're doing here at Pocket Pulp, please rate, review, subscribe, and share. Tell people. And now... The God's Fall Written by Joshua Cook. Read by Eric Brian Moore. 697 After the Founding of Palnor. High Priest of Amder, Gerald Del Farn, winced for the thirtieth time since this morning as his ornate coach ran over yet another rock. I hate the mountains, Del Farn spoke to the man seated across from him. The minor priest nodded. The roads here can be quite rocky, but Amder... Delfarn gave the man a long look, and felt some level of satisfaction when he shut his mouth faster than a gulping fish. He knew all about Amder. He hated the fact that the temple to the god was in the reach of all places, and not in Tour. As it was, he only managed to spend half a year where the real power was, in the capital. Worse yet, the reach stunk. Smelting had a certain odor. And while the mountains had their moments of beauty, the wind from them blew the smoke and haze right into his temple. Amder's temple. My lord, high priest, are you worried about today? Some of the stories about the Chalzik are terrifying. The minor priest, whose name Gerald couldn't remember, began to shiver in his seat. No, I'm not worried. Palnor has the strongest and best-equipped army in all the north, maybe in all of Alos. Some wild men from the swamps are no real threat. Gerald watched as yet another interminable gray hunk of rock passed by. At least a forge master is there. <laughs> forge master Reese means Amder's blessing upon this day. I'm sure of it. The minor priest smiled a wide smile of near adoration. Fool. Forge master Reese is an idiot. Given all the advantages and blessings and does nothing good with any of them. That power should have been his, not some hammer-swinging dullard. Simon Reese could have made the faith rich and powerful. All the forge masters before him could have as well. Gerald Del Farn had no real issue with the forge master helping people, as long as he and his faith was helped first. It was good to keep the commoners in line with trinkets of faith, but real power came from the rich. There was so much more that could be done if only the priesthood and, more importantly, the high priest himself could control that power. He realized that the priest was waiting for him to say something. Yes, yes, I'm sure the forge master will be a large help in this fight. Gerald tried to remember this priest's name, but it escaped him. I don't like him, though. He never gets to ride with me again. Smoke trailed up in a swirling pattern up ahead. They were almost at the camp. He should be back in the reach by nightfall, and then on to Tour. 
The defeat of the Chalzic Horde would be something that the king would celebrate, and Gerald Delfarne would make sure he was there. Simon Reese walked across the already muddy ground, picking his steps. The stink of battle already hung in the air from the earlier skirmishes, but he knew this was all coming to a head soon. He made his way through the camp, keeping his head down and covered by his leather cloak and hood, keeping his face from being seen. His cloak, emblazoned with a silver hammer and golden anvil, the day-to-day -day wear of the forge master meant he was not to be bothered. He was glad for the large hood. He didn't want the soldiers to see his face. Simon couldn't stop thinking about the feeling of dread that had come over him the past day. It wouldn't do for the soldiers to worry, though. He was the living avatar of Amder made flesh, so to speak. And while he was no soldier himself, he'd been around enough camps to know that the rumors would spread faster than anything else on a day like this. He'd gone back to the Reach for a day to see his family. He hadn't wanted to leave. He'd much rather be there any day. His wife and children had been overjoyed to see him, and the feeling had been mutual. Sarah's face had lit up, showing that same fierce joy that had attracted him in the first place. His goodbye this morning had been a long one. He'd not wanted to let her out of his arms. Even still, he could smell the slight hint of mint and lemon, her favorite soap from Tour. It wasn't cheap, but being the forge master and chosen of a god did have a few perks. Jane and Tessa had climbed all over Simon, badgering him with questions about the coming fight. He'd answered in generalities, better to spare them the details, at least at their age. Both had shown him things they had forged recently. He carried those trinkets in his belt pouch. Mementos of a better world than this cursed war. He'd argued long into the night with his god as Sarah curled up next to him, the feeling of her bare skin on his, and the cool air of the reach coming in through the window had kept him calm when his frustrations with the situation had risen high. Amder had made it clear today would be the end of the threat. He could feel the god in his head even now. Amder didn't always make sense to Simon, but he was a god. Simon wasn't even sure Amder liked being a god. He wanted to make things and help people. Worship and a priesthood were an afterthought. <laughs> priesthood. What a joke. Simon continued through the camp, heading towards the Prime Forge. The Palinor army always traveled with a full foundry. Thanks to the Forge Master, it was a marvel of engineering. Collapsible and easy to store, yet full-featured enough that with enough raw materials they could pretty much guarantee that they could make anything the army needed. As a result, the army was one of the most well-equipped and well-armored military forces the world of Alos had ever seen. Simon finally reached the foundry, his boots muddy and stinking of the accumulated debris of horse, man, and blood. The guards at the foundry passed to let him in, as he headed towards the command tent. General Ashton stood, arguing with Gerald Delfarn, High Priest of Ander. Simon's stomach soured at seeing Delfarn. Simon had always been at odds with Ander's priesthood to varying degrees. Delfarn was the most recent High Priest who felt that the Forge Master should be part of and subservient to the priesthood. The priests had always chaffed at the powers that Amder gave his forge master. The ability to forge weapons that never needed sharpening, to make items that never seemed to tarnish, to make new and wondrous machines. The priesthood, in contrast, could not do anything. They led the worship of Amder, and being the priesthood of the god of craft did have its perks— but it seemed one high priest after another craved the abilities the forge master used. Simon frowned, knowing that back and forth had set up a power struggle that had lasted for over a thousand years. His wife had even asked if Del Farn was a blood god follower. He had that reptilian cast to his features. The enemy wasn't known as the scaled one for nothing. He sometimes agreed with her but knew he could never say that, at least not publicly. 
Politics. I hate politics. General Ashton noticed him first and raised a fist in salute. Simon liked Ashton. He was a solid military man and appreciated the edge the forge master gave his army. He, unlike other officers Simon had worked with, didn't come up with unreasonable demands for the foundry. Hell chosen, General Ashton said with a grin. Simon glanced at Delphorn, rewarded with a tiny glower that flitted across Delphorn's face. Simon knew that General Ashton had done it on purpose, yet another reason to like him. General Ashton, I priest Delphorn, Simon replied, giving each a small bow as he approached them. Forge Master Reese, Delphorn replied, not mentioning his status as chosen. The high priest made only the slightest nodding bow with his words. Simon let it go, knowing Delphorn had only done so to get under his skin. Not that I care, but I'm sure he thinks I'm angry. The man would never get that Simon just did not care about matters of prestige and rank. Looks like the primary force of the Chalzik Horde will be here today, and we can end this in one fell strike, General Ashton said. The scouts report a large force, to be sure, but as they are coming out of the eastern scrublands, they will be a less than well-rested and fed force. Simon nodded. The horde had crossed the scrublands after rampaging through the eastern kingdom and ruining it. Driven by their bloodthirsty god, Valnages, the horde, while not a proper army, were a large and rapacious force. The stories of massive blood sacrifices and whole cities being enslaved to build a temple complex devoted to the blood god had come first. The king and his nobles had the good sense to know that whatever the blood god had planned, it wouldn't stop there. But now they came against the Skyreach and the Palnor army. The Skyreach Mountains, rising high into the air behind Simon, were the eastern border, forming a formidable natural barrier. Though the main reason it was known was the huge mineral wealth concentrated here. It was the primary reason Amder based his worship in Palnor. Home as well. I will not let anything happen to them. The Forge Master and his associates, I'm sure, will be ready for their part in the fight, Delphorn added with a tight smile. The priesthood of Amder will stand ready to heal and bless those who fall in Amder's name. Simon resisted the urge to sigh. He was sure the priesthood would, of course, but he knew Delphorn would not. He wished Amder would pay more attention to the priests, but their leadership was a political one, which was why he got saddled with dealing with people like Delphorn. He was sure Delphorn thought of the Forge Master as nothing more than a fool, a fool for not using his powers for whatever scheme the man could come up with. The Forge Master was granted a tiny portion of Amder's powers. They used that power in service not only to the crown, but the common people of Palnor. They made items as they were needed for the common folk with no charge. A Forge Master made item may last for years, even generations with no sign of any wear. Oh, to be sure, sometimes Forge Master made items did break, usually when taken to far from the land, or when someone tried to sell them. The smithing guild were the ones who spread the name of Amder outside the land of Palnor. While they couldn't bless items the way Simon could, they were smiths at the pinnacle of their craft. Delphorn would never say it, of course, but he, like those who had come before him, wanted that power to enrich themselves, enrich the priests. Not all of them, of course. There were plenty of good, hard-working priests of Amder who truly believed in the message of making things for the joy of it. Creation was its own reward. But most of those men and women were not in positions of power. There certainly hadn't been a person with that bent in Delphorn's position in a great many long years. Yes, we will all do our parts, Simon said, with a bland smile. Do you need anything from the foundry for today's battle, General Ashton? He continued, pointedly ignoring Delphorn's attempt to make another comment. I and the guild stand ready to provide anything you need. General Ashton shook his head and provided Simon with a list of some more weaponry and catapult changes. 
Very good, General. This will be ready in under two hours, Simon replied, and turned on his heel and left. General Ashton turned to Delfarn and watched as Delfarn stared after Simon Reese. He's a good man, Delfarn. I don't understand why you fight like this, General Ashton said as he went back to his maps. A man, maybe. Good. Maybe, Delfarn replied with a right smile and slight bow. Delfarn took his leave of the general and went to make his own preparations for the coming battle. The general watched Delfarn walk away and shrugged. He would not get involved in this stupid fight. He wasn't an overly pious man either way, but he did truly like the forge master. He liked anyone who told you exactly what they were and why. Delfarn was a different case. He knew the high priest wasn't exactly a good man, but he told you exactly who he was, and so the general could work with him. He was more concerned about the coming battle. The Chalzik had come boiling out of the jungles and swamps of the southern corner of the peninsula in numbers undreamed of. Driven by their mad god, they had destroyed Palnor's long rival and sometimes ally, Hautik. A lot of good people died in that assault. And if scouts and spies were honest, there was no Hautik anymore. The Horde had raised an entire county to the bare earth. Horrible stories of the death of thousands of plain, normal people. Palnor will not fall. Palnor will not have that fate. Simon felt the horde before he saw them. The very ground shook with their steps. They darkened the land, swarming towards the Palnorian lines like suicidal ants. Simon and the guildmasters had completed the work General Ashton had asked them to only twenty minutes before, and had been pacing, waiting for the coming fight. While a forge master didn't as a rule get involved in the thick of battle, he was armed. His hammer was God-blessed, and both a symbol of his office and a powerful weapon in its own right. He had also reforged over the years every single guildmaster's hammer that was with him, giving each a tint speck, a small blessing of the god they all followed. Simon's hammer had worked into it the bearded face of Amder in silver lace and drendel still. He had rarely used it to fight with, but he knew today he could have to. He surveyed the seething, approaching horde. By Amder's brass ones, there were a lot of them. He steadied himself. He was the chosen of Amder, with the well-trained and best-equipped army in the world. A horde of eastern, bloodlusting, ragtag fighters and berserkers were no match for the Palnor army. Though, while surveying the roiling mass of enemy fighters... He wasn't sure that he was correct. Simon noticed the change in the air before the silence fell across the battlefield. Anticipation seemed to fill the space between the two armies. One, a laid-out force, gleaming steel and iron, discipline and confidence given form. The other, a mass of ragtag fighters, armed with any assortment of equipment, some clean, some not. Though he could not see their faces from this distance, Simon pictured them as crazed zealots, their prayers to their blood-lusting god being the wholesale pillaging and destruction of everything and everyone who stood in their way. Howls and screams broke forth as the horde surged forward, reminding Simon of nothing more than a carpet of locusts eating everything in their path. If Palnor did not stop them here, the horde could go through all the north. The stand had to be here, and now. The mountains would help funnel the horde into the army. They had to stand and kill. The clash of the two forces was near deafening. Simon was used to the sound of metal on metal, but this dwarfed the sound of the forge. Add the screaming and howling of the attackers and defenders, the moans of pain and death, and the noise was almost unbearable. Simon stood and watched the battle from the foundry site for now. He could see General Ashton watching the battle from the command pavilion, shouting orders and sending pages running to each brigade. 
High Priest El Farn stood next to General Ashton, looking somewhat surprised and pale for once. Simon shook his head with derision. Del Farn had expected this to be a simple fight. Nothing in war was ever simple. Not that he was going to try and explain that to the man. Hours passed, and Simon watched. Slowly but surely, the tide was turning towards the Palnorian force. The Horde had the numbers, but Palinor, better equipment, and far better strategy. It was forcing the Chalzik into the main body of the army, where they were being wiped out. Simon felt some of the stress leave him, though he knew that he and the guildmasters would be busy after the fight reforging weapons and fixing damaged catapults and other gear. Simon had about decided to stand down when the roar came. Rage incarnate, that was all Simon could think when he heard it. Raw, unbridled rage and destruction and hate, overwhelming hate. The roar overcame the sound of battle, the sound of the Chalzik screams and the crash of weapons. Simon turned to the battlefield once more, stumbling as his soul itself fell into despair. Behind the horde stood a huge, blood-red, scaled figure. Valnages, the god of bloodlust and rage, had come to the battlefield in the flesh. Simon knew this was not supposed to happen, but there stood the blood god, regardless of whatever rules were supposed to deny it. The horde surged forth, renewed in their rage. The Palnorian army fell back. You could feel the panic start to surge through the assembled forces. A few squads on the flanks even ran. Simon looked to the command tent. General Ashton stood, pale-faced and unsure. High Priest Del Farn was nowhere to be seen. Simon wondered if he had fled. No, there the man was. He reappeared from behind a wall, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. For once, Simon didn't judge him. What else could a man do in the face of that? Simon Rees, forge master and chosen of Amder, was at a loss of what to do himself. But at that moment, instructions from Amder filled his head. Simon, you must use the final action. Simon went down to both knees. Both wonder and despair filled him. He knew that that moment his life was gone. But if Amder's plan worked, all Alos might still know peace. He despaired of never seeing his family again. But if the Horde got through, they wouldn't have a life themselves. Simon turned to the assembled guildmasters and explained Amder's plan. Their eyes widened, but they, as one, nodded their agreement. Simon steeled himself. He imagined this was going to hurt. A lot. Simon stripped down to his underrobes, but for his hammer. He walked towards the main reservoir of molten metal and stood in front of it, looking into its red, roiling depths. With a deep sigh, he nodded to the assembled guildmasters, and one at a time, they threw their hammers into the pool. Each hammer seemed to alight in the pool and melt slowly. The metal changed colors with each addition, getting lighter going from a deep, angry red to by the last hammer other than Simon's, it had progressed to a bright silver with gold and copper highlights. Simon turned to each guildmaster. As one by one they touched his hammer and collapsed, the hammer glowed with each transfer, lives lost. I am so sorry, Sarah. I will miss you. Jane, Tessa, be good. Grow strong. Simon looked back in the direction of the reach. For a moment he could imagine the smell of the city he loved so much, the cold wind blowing down the mountainside as it did most late mornings, the laughter of good men and women. I will miss you all. Simon Rees, forge master and chosen of Amder, turned to the now glowing white pool of metal and stepped onto it. He did not sink, and he did not burn. The metal flowed over him, and he grew. He grew until Simon Reese was no more. All that stood there now was the avatar of Amder, god of the forge. Twenty feet high, 
silver metal and holding a large glowing hammer, the form of Amder stood, looking across the already blood-soaked land. Valnages looked back, scaled reptilian spirit, but upright as a man. Neither form spoke but those who survived that day swore that some communication passed between the two forms, some way of talking that only the gods could know of. The scream rent the air as the blood god leapt forward, only to be met with a blow from the hammer that Amder carried. The two titans joined battle as their followers ran. Not even the Chalzik in their lust for blood and battle dared to stay where the gods themselves fought. Valnages leaping and clawing at Amder's metal form, his red-scaled skin glinting in the afternoon sun. Giant metal Amder swinging his hammer, each blow shaking the very earth if he missed, or a bruising scale breaking hit when it connected. Amder's form was not without damage either, the claws of Valnages scraping long furrows in a metal form that would normally be impervious to harm. The fight went on for hours with a handful of mortals on each side watching. The blood priests of the Horde on one side, and General Ashton and High Priest Delfarn on the other. Finally, the two forms parted and stared at each other. Amder's shell was more scratches and gouges than metal, and occasionally liquid metal would flow from a crack. Where it touched ground, a silvery crystal would sprout, glowing with its own inner light. Valnages was bleeding from half a dozen wounds now, and where his blood fell a red mist erupted, and corrupting everything it touched. Without a sound, the two gods rushed at one another, Valnages's claws finally piercing the chest of Amder, and Amder's hammer finally bursting the head of Valnages. An explosion that shook the very foundation of the land knocked everyone down. A tearing sound, as Allos itself was wounded by the fall. And there, across the battlefield, a huge rent in the earth tore open, a rent that spread wider and longer until the ends could not be seen. Both forms fell into this new valley with an earth-shaking thud and began to dissolve, filling the surrounding earth with a mix of pure silver crystals and a noxious red mist. And so, at the Battle of Skyreach did fall the Forge Master and Chosen of Amder, leaving only the priesthood behind. Later known as the God's Fall, all was changed. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed God's Fall by Joshua C. Cook. If you want to continue the Forge Master cycle, check it out on Amazon or on Audible narrated by yours truly. And book one is called Blood of a Fallen God. If you want to learn more about Josh, check him out at joshccook.com. And I'll put all the links in the notes. All right, if you enjoy stories and you want to hear a new one every week, please subscribe. And check us out on Facebook at Pocket Pulp, where we look forward to talking with and about the writers further. If you're a writer and you'd like to have your story featured on Pocket Pulp, contact us at pocketpulpsubmission at gmail.com. My name is Eric Brian Moore, Eric with a C, Brian with a Y, and you can follow me on Twitter or check out my website, ericbrianmoore.com. Music by Bluemont Score and Eternal Producer from Pixabay. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to reading you another fantastic story next week. 